Did you know that food would butcher coming up at some point yes. in the show? Yeah, well, we can we do will talk some Warriors. Uh, Bobby Wagner's given up close to 400 yards or more than 400 yards yeah. in pass coverage. Uh, Jordan Brooks, who missed the playoff game last year, uh, has given up more than 300 yards in pass coverage. And Julian Love, the safety, has also given up more than 300 yards in uh, pass coverage. They can exploit Seattle tomorrow via running backs and tight ends. I expect another big game from George Kittle and Christian McCaffrey. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's about what the Niners do. It's not about the Seattle Seahawks. They can't run the football. They're 25th in the league at rushing. Good luck running against this front seven. And if you have time to throw, good luck. Because both said Chase Young is going to be in your face. Javon Hargrave is going to be in your face. The Niners have their swagger back. They're not looking ahead to Philadelphia. They know what time it is. When you start stacking wins, the first goal of the season always is to make the playoffs, right? Mm-hmm. But then it's win the division. Win division. Yes. That's where it starts. Make sure the NFC West, and everybody knows, Arizona already knows, yeah, the West goes through San Francisco. The Rams, Sean McVay, they know, yeah, we can't beat the 49ers in the regular season. Not right now. Seattle, they're front runners. They think that they were in those games last year. Well, they tinkered their entire personnel defensively to try to slow down the 49ers. Yep. They have eight new starters on yep. defense. I'm very interested. And now one of them is Bobby Wagner, who was an old uh, you know, Seahawk who came back after a year with a couple years with the Rams. So I, I'm interested to see what it looks like personnel wise. Witherspoon, their high touted draft pick, is a monster. He's Baldy a player. called him Ronnie Lot like. Yeah, he's a player. Baldy, not me. He's a player. But let's see him tackle Debo uh, Samuel. I'm with you. Well, de- quietly, Debo has been excellent, and so has Ayuk. They've right. been ultra efficient offensively against Seattle. Like, it is really, if you just look the last three games, oh, yeah. Ayuk's been well, efficient, Debo's been efficient, both running and, and well, catching. Kittle's been monster. CMC's been a monster. Well, like, they've gotten anything they wanted offensively. George Kittle's on a heater right now. 432 receiving yards in the last four games. It was funny. We are talking about him in Cleveland. How the hell, I know. how does he leave the field with one catch and one yard? Well, you know what? He hasn't done that since. <laughs> he hasn't done that since. Eight catches, 89 yards last week. He's in good form. He's healthy. And he has monster days in Seattle. He loves Lumen Field. That's basically home away from home. And the all whites? And the all whites. I love the all whites. Well, since the Niners got the uniforms right, at least they got it right. I also, I, I, I'm going to make a, a plea. No, do you like the human highlighters? Go ahead. Sorry. No, to, to a plea to the Niners. On Christmas, I like them. There's a subtle difference between the old logo that they're going to be wearing tomorrow and the one that's their modern one. The modern one has like a shade of gold on the inside or whatever, and and it's good. I'm not saying it's not good. The old logo, the simplistic red, white, and black. It's so much better. It knocks. It's so much better. To me, that's the one they need to go back to permanently. It's so much better. You know, somebody actually, uh, there was a tweet yesterday I saw. What's that? Where the new logo, the Niners that you're talking about with the gold and the white and the black. It's been around as long as that former I logo. Bet. Yeah, that's 25 me. years or something like that. Well, they they made the switch back in the right. 90s and um, the 90s were 30 years ago. Yeah, we're getting old. Um, let's get back <laughs> yeah. to the law. Let's get back to the went back to saloon font. Let's get back to the lines, man. We got a couple Richies out here. We got Candlestick. Let me go to Candlestick Reek. Whoa. He's out Union Square. He must be Whoa. shopping right now at Union Square. It's Union Square. Where did candlestick you sit at candlestick? Reek. I sat in section 12. Yo, what's going on? It's your boy Candlestick Reek tapping in with y'all. Long time listener. First time, we'll call it first time caller basically, but um, yeah, I'm right here, Union Square. Got the tree glistening, looking nice. I walk by it every day. How you, how you fellas doing this morning? I mean, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing, I'm doing great. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to roll. There's no Thanksgiving break for you, boy. Yeah. We got Seahawks week. It's the Suns tonight against KD. I need Thanks to win that me. game. Like, I, I just, you know, it's no holiday for me. It's a sport. It's sports. It's sports, 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 no, sports. See, it's a I great to, sports weekend. I had to pull out all the linen for my wife so she can set at the table for tomorrow. I had to get all of the cooking pans out. I, I had a lot of the honey-do lists yesterday. I know. What's up, Candlestick Greek? What you got? All right, so first off, I got to holler at your boy Shasky real quick. My man, Shasky, you know we love you. But this all this Seahawks talk this, you like Pete Carroll. First of all, Pete Carroll is annoying. Everybody knows he's annoying. He's like that old coach, PE, PE teacher coach, smacking his gum, always wants to talk to you, act funny. And he's like cool, but he's also annoying. 
And those jerseys, you're tripping on the jerseys. First of all, that ain't the type of highlighter that the kids are into. They're into like the Volt, the Volt green. Right. If you know what I mean. I do. Not, right. not the Bruce that Bolt ugly batting gloves? green that they're rocking right now. That That is hurt. Right. Hurt. I, we call that hurt, burnt, dirt, McGirt. So there's these there's these batting gloves be for uh, baseball right now. They're called Bruce Bolts. They're like ninety five dollars a pair, and all the kids got them. Batting gloves. Parents must have a lot of money. Ninety five dollars a pop. Parents must have a lot of money, or they love their children. How much Parents war have do a those lot batting of gloves give you? What? How much war do those batting gloves give you? If you're spending ninety five. <laughs> hey, look, let me tell you this right now. Batting gloves are essential if you are actually taking hacks right. all week because you are going to have callus build up no why, matter what. Like, you, the Hunter Pence days are over. No one's doing the moistest salute. No one's urinating on their hands. And that concludes our baseball talk. Uh, Richie Richie Livermore. We're not talking baseball today. It's Seahawks week. What's going on in here? It's Seahawks week. We're talking batting gloves and highlighter uniforms and Pete Carroll chewing his gum. What the hell is going on? Well, the Pete Carroll part makes sense. You know, no, it does. Well, it does kind of make sense. <laughs> it does. Gosh, I hate the Seahawks. Why is Sean Love? Way too. Oh, my God. Where are we going? Richie Rich, what's happening? What's up, my guys? B, <laughs> B, what the hell's wrong with your boy over there? Oh, no, Sausalito Shasky. Yeah. I don't know what happened to him. Man. Somebody kidnapped Butcher yeah. Boy and brought in Sausalito Shasky the day before the holidays, and that was driving hey. me crazy. He, yeah, he for sure woke up in Sausalito this morning. What the hell's wrong with you, Shasky, man? I don't give a damn about no P. Carroll. Thank you. With his dad wearing, with his dad wearing New Balance, man. That guy's annoying. I don't give a damn how old he is. We do not like nothing that has to do with the sea chickens, man. It's Niners out here. We about to smack them, eat this turkey on the 50, man. And on a real note, y'all, hey, thanks for keeping the morning lit, man. We Thank you, Half man. the guys over here in the, gar- in, the, in, the gar- in the garbage truck, man. We rock you guys. Wh- which garbage real, truck? Man. It, Where- it makes where do you I'm, work? I'm Livermore Sanitation. All right, Livermore Sanitation. Shout out I to you guys out there at Livermore yep, yep. Sanitation. We hey, love we you love guys. You guys, man. Thank you, man. But hey, have a good Thanksgiving, you guys. Be blessed and, and, and keep it going, man. Right look, on. Go Niners. Thank you. Look, I, I hate to be this guy. But look, the older I get, the more I respect certain people in industries that I wouldn't normally respect. All right? I'm just keeping it real. Pete Carroll is a local guy. Born in San Francisco, raised up in Larksboro. Come on, man. You you, you got to have respect for him. He went to Redwood High for crying out loud. You know what? Redwood High he, in 1997, a, the Washington Eagles played Redwood High, uh-huh. and we kicked their ass. Redwood High out in Larksboro. Redwood High we kicked their ass. 420. The Redwood Giants. I don't care if they created 420. I'm going to smoke every day anyway. I don't need 420 to smoke. That's the casual smoker holiday. The real smokers smoke every day. The Redwood Giants, I don't care about the Redwood Watch Giants. He's a, he's a junior college guy like you. He went to College of Marin. Good for him. College of Marin stinks. He was a Pacific except for Lorraine University Russell. of Pacific grad assistant. Oh, great. The home of Michael Olawa Candy. He was a Ooh, former do. 49er defensive backs coach. Yeah, and we got smoked by the Green Bay Packers in the second round with him as a, I as can't a respect defensive him. coordinator. Oh, man, I don't care. He stinks. Be careful. I'm not respecting anything with Seattle. I don't respect rivals. That's why they're rivals. You don't respect. Sam Lubbock, do you you hear the way Sam Lubbock talks about my Florida State Seminoles? You know why? Because he's a hurricane. He doesn't respect anything from Florida State. And that's the way it should be. Larry like Bird. the Hutt Bowden. See, that's how he should be. Larry Bird said he'd play his game, and then he'd go into the hotel, crack a beer, and he'd watch and see the highlights to see what Magic did that night. His rival to make sure that he was one up on him. And he didn't respect Magic until like 87. Well, it, it, it took, took him almost a while. 20 years to respect Pete Carroll, and here I am. Come at me. And you're like, in the, you're like I already did. The callers are coming at you. Richie in San Jose. Richie I don't need to say anything. The callers can take it away. Richie in San Jose. You did it to hey, yourself, what's up, Shasky. Guys? Okay. Well, what's up, guys? Hey, I'm, re- I'm really excited to play the Seahawks. I hate the Seahawks. Um, but, like, a couple a couple things real quick. Uh, Shasky, just uh, the Jay-Z thing. Um, I'm from the, I'm the generation, you know, growing up a little with Jay-Z and stuff. But he's kind of like a love or hate guy. I'm more of a Nas fan. So, okay. I mean, I don't know. If that'll yeah, I'm be not big on Nas. For everyone. Yeah, you know what, Richie? But, uh, I do like Nas. Nas, he has some flops, but Nas is a very good lyricist. Yeah, I do Pop like Nas. Yeah, kind of ruined Nas I feel like you have to me. choose one or the other because they kind yeah. of didn't like each other, right? Yeah, no, yeah, I agree. But anyway, anyway. But anyways, um, going back to the Seahawks, a uh, couple quick dynamics I think I've been uh, to pay attention to this week. Um, first of all, uh, did you guys ever see Dre Greenlaw's uh, thing with Fred Warner? They had a little thing on YouTube um, where Dre, Dre Greenlaw they uh, they asked him why he he seems to have like a special edge when he plays uh, Seattle, like he plays like turns up his nastiness and you, up a notch even, you know. And he said he had this story. I don't know if you guys heard it or not yet, but he he tells about how uh, basically uh, Pete Carroll kind of dogged him and like 
kind of like, you know, brushed him off during the pre-draft process. So he has like an extra edge when he plays the Seahawks. So that's going to, I'm excited to watch that, that, see if he brings it. Yep. Yeah. And then, uh, and I'm, and I'm worried though about, not not too worried because our team is good, but I, I'm just it's going to be an intriguing uh, thing to watch to see how the, the new rookie uh, safety goes against them. Yeah, they have, they have a good receiving core up there in yep. Seattle. Um, so uh, yeah, but basically, oh, and the uh, last thing I want to say, the Nick Sirianni thing. Um, if you guys can, if it was hard to understand to hear that, like exactly what like what he said on like when it came out through the radio. So if you can tell me what he said, but I don't like Nick Sirianni at all. Like that guy. I can't. I'm really just hoping we don't get anyone injured in Seattle because I hope we. I, but we can't overlook them. But at no. the same time, oh man, Nick Sirianni is annoying. Hey, listen, we'll get to them next week. Hell of a call right there. Hell of a call. We'll play the Nick Sirianni sound. You got it right here. Go ahead, and play the Nick Sirianni sound. Hey, so he basically said, "I don't hear your bleep anymore, Chiefs fans." And he said, see ya. But he waited until he got into the tunnel where no fans could see him. So he did the hold me back, bro? The hold me back, bro. You that know, was Nick Sirianni. When your boys get in front of uh, in front of you and they're holding you back, you're like, hold me back, bro. Yeah. I'm going to fight this guy. But it's, you it's have no worst. intentions of fighting it's that guy. It's the worst. It's the worst. So that's, that's, that's Nick Sirianni. But we'll get to him. We'll get to him next week. Right now, we need to lock in on Seattle. You know what? The last caller said something very interesting about Jair Proud. All right, I'll, I'll stand back on this one. What's we that? will be watching the rookie strong safety in his first game at Lumen Field. This is a big one. It gets those receivers. You know Gino's going to be looking for them. But then I believe Steve Wilkes, who does specialize in secondary coaching, who coaches well, who coaches DBs very well, he's practiced all year long. You got John Lynch, a Hall of Fame safety, in the ear of Jair That's Brown. A good point. You know, I was told, a good point. you know, at a practice earlier this year, in training camp, matter of fact, well, I don't think we were there, but he got a pick six. John Lynch was jumping on the field. He jumped on the field and started patting Jair Brown in the helmet. Like, yeah, let's go, baby. So you got John Lynch in his ear. You got Steve Wilkes in his ear. And you got this veteran defense that's going to help him. Jair Brown's not going to be overwhelmed. He played Big Ten football. He's been in the big house. He's been in the horseshoe. He played Happy Valley in front of 100,000 100, people. This ain't nothing he's never seen. Well, I, I was surprised how high on, how high Baldy was on him. Baldy was, was talking him up like he's going to be special, special. And, right. you know, safety is a very underrated position. When you find one of those special type of players, they're a decade-like player. Yep. And they make plays in the run game. They make plays in the pass game. So I I'm excited to see it. He's going to get baptized by fire. You're going to see it at some point. And against a team that goes three wide, yeah. this is the matchup. This is, be a great that your test. Point. this is a great test for him. A great test for Jair Brown. So